Hello and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing DecoFoil and how to use it in your projects. This video is a little bit different than most of my other videos. To be honest, I haven't had a lot of time to play around with DecoFoil. So I thought I would actually walk you through the process that I use when I'm learning how to use a new product. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the gel, the pen, as well as laser prints to be able to add the foil to these products. Also, I wanted to show you how you can get a good result without using a laminator or a die cutting machine. Not everyone has these, and often for me, I'm working in a journal, so you can't use a laminator or a die cutting machine when you're trying to work in a journal. So I wanted to show you a few different ways you could get a similar result with a fairly good success. So let's get started. So the first thing I use is the DecoFoil Transfer Gel Duo. The reason I like this one is because I can add it onto my journaling pages, I can add it on surfaces that would be a little bit less even, and you can add your foil on top. And so I'm just going to add a little bit through the stencil itself in a very thin layer. And I'm using a longer knife for this just so that I can try to get a bit more smooth look to just how I'm adding it to the page. And I just realized I used a fairly fine stencil for this. This may or may not work well once I've added the foil. We'll see. But we're just going to experiment and just figure out how this could possibly work on a project. And because I am using a fairly long palette knife, it's working pretty well for just getting it through all of these little crevices. And I figure this is a very sticky glue is basically what you're adding to your page here. So you can see it can sometimes take a few times just to kind of get it through and part of that is because I am working in a book. I don't have a perfectly flat surface here and it's taking a little bit more work just to kind of get it in the nooks and crannies that I want it to fall. And the other option is you can always go the other way as well. You don't have to always go down. But you can see I'm getting a pretty smooth finish on that. And because it was very fine, a lot of the glue fell in between and behind. So there, there's a lesson learned. So when you're doing this, think hard about what type of stencil you want to use just so that you don't end up in a situation like this. So something to think about when you're using these types of gels, you need to think about what type of surface you're putting it through. I'm also going to do a little section here with a much wider stencil and we're going to see if that works a bit better. The other thing I may need to do with this is just be really careful how much working I do on it. It might be one of those things that you just put it through once and you kind of leave it. And as you can see, I'm not very good at just leaving things. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit down and it's a little bit more fluid than you would get from, let's say, a paste or a harder gel. So part of this is just trying to figure out how to make this work better for your project. And there you go. So that that had a little bit more space in between it. You can see a couple spots here where I worked it a bit too much and that's why I have some spots that are not perfect but they, they will work. They will work. And we're going to have to set this aside for a little bit to let this cure before we can really add the foil on top. Because you don't want anything that's super super sticky trying to add your foil to it. So I'm going to add the gel into one more surface. For this one we're using just plain paper. So I want to show you different ways you can heat set or get the foil to transfer. And so I wanted to show you what it looks like just on white paper. And I wanted to show you what it looks like on a variety of different surfaces. And again, all of this needs to be set aside to dry before we can add our foil. So before we move on to the next technique, just make sure that when you're using this DecoFoil transfer gel, make sure to wash your stencils very well, wash your surfaces very well, wash your tools very well. This stuff is very sticky. If you want it to stay unsticky, make sure that you wash things right away. 
But as that dries, I wanted to move on and show you a, one of the more simple ways you can supposedly use this foil on your projects. I have not tried this yet, so we'll see how it goes. I just Before we get too much farther, I wanted to show you basically the sizes that this foil comes in. You can get it in, in these little sheets that are this size, which are... Um, six inches by six inches. You can also get them in the longer tubes. And these pieces are six inches by 12 inches. And these ones come with five sheets, these ones come with five sheets. So depending on the size of your project and how you like to use it, that's something to think about before you get too far into this. So generally I prefer using the larger sheets just because I'm usually using them in journals and other things. I like having the extra space. But again, if you're using mostly cards and small things, these sheets are really good as well. Probably one of the easiest ways to add foil to images is by using a laminator and just using a laser print. These laser prints came from Wild Whisper Designs. When I get the cut files, it also comes with a PDF with the images. I thought I would use them just to add some color to them and use them in my projects. So for this, I'll usually be using a laminator for this. So I'll show you that first, which is basically you take your laminator and you wanna make sure it's fully heated up. So mine has a little green light going, so I know I'm, I know I'm good to go. So what you wanna do is actually take a piece of parchment paper you want to add your laser image in here, and it needs to be laser image specifically, and then just add your foil over top. And you want your foil to be a little bit bigger than your image. And so I'm just going to create my little sandwich here. I'm actually gonna to try to butt both of them up against the edge. And this is where it's good to leave a little bit of space around your images, just so that you don't have any worries about the foil maybe not covering the entire thing. And just make sure that your piece of paper is smaller than your laminator. So once you have your sandwich together, you just want to run it through your machine. So I'll try to pull my machine up so you can see this a little bit better. And basically once your laminator is fully, fully heated up, just run it through. And you always want to make sure that the folded end is it goes through first, that way it will feed correctly. So you always want to let this cool for a minute. And I'll see how I did. So it looks wrinkly, so that's a good sign. So that hopefully means it's actually melted and stuck to the images. Okay, that feels pretty cool to the touch. So well check that out. I've never actually done it before, so like wow, that actually works really well. You can see a couple spots here where it didn't work quite as well. I think my printer is starting to run, my laser printer is running a little bit short on ink. But look at that. That's pretty sweet. So again, really easy way of getting your images from the foil onto the laser print. So let's say you don't have a laminator and you want to try this technique. So I'm going to try using an iron. I've taken it off the steam setting. I'm letting it warm up. I'm putting it on about a four out of seven, so supposedly cotton blends. So I'm trying not to have too much heat, but I do definitely want to have enough heat where it's going to actually transfer. And what I'm going to do is again line this up. I'm going to put it in my sandwich, and I'm using a heat resistant mat as it is for this. So it shouldn't be a problem just having the parchment paper sandwich just on the surface here. So I think it's supposed to be up to temperature now. So we're gonna give this a try. So let's wait about 30 seconds. It's gonna let it cool for a minute. It seems like with all of these ones, you want to let them cool. If you don't let them cool, I get the sense your results may not turn out very well because I think the foil itself needs to actually come down from heat just for it to actually work well on this technique. We'll see if that works. If it doesn't, I might just pull up a corner and then try again. But it has wrinkled. That's a good sign. It's still fairly warm. Uh, oh. So this is 30 seconds with the iron on like a medium low heat. 
Okay, so one thing I noticed is that I had a little bit more wrinkle. So you can see there's some black coming through there. That one did not fully transfer, neither did it here. So what I'm going to do is because I have a little bit more foil on my sheet on the corners, I'm going to put this down very carefully in areas. This probably takes a little bit of practice to get it right. But we're going to give this another try. Let's see if we can get this one corner here working a little bit better. Before I do that, I'm just throwing another piece straight over top. The one thing you want to make sure with this is that the foil is never touching the iron itself. I have a feeling some very bad things will happen. <laughs> so I have a feeling it will just melt onto your iron and then you're going to be very unhappy with the results. So and I think because I was doing a larger page here, I think it would probably would have worked a bit better if I would put all the heat just down in the one place over having to move it around. I didn't count that time, so we'll see how, how long that is. See if we've got any bit of a better result. So a little bit more transferred. So you can see with this technique, this is one that would work a lot better. And again, it depends if you like a little bit of the black showing through. If you don't want it all perfectly foiled and like the little bit of texture, that's not a bad thing. But I think this is one that will take a little bit of fussing with just to get the right amount of heat down, the right amount of color down. Because this, this particular image is a little bit lighter than the others, which is probably why it didn't take quite as well just as it is. But you can see that generally the laminator works a little bit better than the iron. But I wanted to try it for proof of concept to show you that you could actually iron and get a similar technique. What if you want to use these foils in something that you can't put through a laminator? Because it's nice that you get these great results putting them through the laminator, but what if you're like me and I spend most of my time working in a journal? These are great because you can just cut them out and add them, but what if you actually want it in your surface on a different page? So let me just find a page in here that maybe I want to add a bit more dimension to. So here's an old piece that I had done a while ago. It's mostly with acrylic paint. I've just added different textures, whatever. Maybe you want to add a little bit of scribbles and mark making to this. So what I have here is a deco foil adhesive pen. So my understanding, this is a very similar thing to the gel where you add it onto the surface and then you add the foil over top. With this one, I notice it's a lot more liquid than the gel that you would put through the stencil. And so this gives you different variation. And so what I'm going to do is just going to start adding some mark making. So I'm doing some scribbles. I'm going to maybe put the word love in here. I'm going to add some more scribbles. Put some hearts. Again. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just throwing some things down. And again, this page I only care so much about just because it's it's not really completed or anything. I just, I've kind of put just random things down just, just kind of for the fun of it. And uh, sometimes this is what all my art journals look like. Not all of them are perfect little projects. Sometimes it's just throwing textures on and seeing what will happen. So in this case, I think maybe I'll go with some blue. So let this sit for a second and let it dry. So I think the idea is you want to let it get a little bit tacky. It's the same thing with the gels. You want them to get a little bit tacky before you start adding anything else on top. And that's feeling a little bit tacky. So we're just going to go for this. We'll, we'll see how this goes. And so usually the idea is, oh, put it on through a laminator. Put it on a through a die cut machine. But a die cut machine, basically all it's doing is adding pressure to your surface. So I thought, well, why don't I just use my bone folder here and just press the edges? Because if it will transfer without a lot of pressure, all it needs is a little bit of pressure and a little bit of heat either or, why not see what I can come up with by just using a bone folder? 
I can see that I'm getting some image transfer because it, you can actually see on the surface there. It's probably very hard to see on the camera, but I am actually getting a little bit of adhesion from this. So I'm just gonna pull up one corner and take a look and see how it does. So that one didn't totally go. So let's just rub it a little bit harder. This is kind of like doing a rub on, honestly. And again, this will work a lot better if you use a machine that's going to put on lots and lots of pressure. But at the same time, like what if you're trying to do it in a different, on a different surface? And let's be honest, you can't put a book through any of these machines like a laminator or a die cutting machine. So let's see. Okay, so there we go. We're getting some transfer. There's a few spots there. I'm not getting as good of a transfer, but if there's glue there, I should be able just to use my finger and work it along. And again, I wasn't very specific about, I wasn't being very careful with my lines. I was doing very scrawly work here. So I can see a couple spots here that still have glue. So I'm going to go back down. Again, this process would be faster if you were just using a machine for it, but if you want to do it in a different surface, this works. I think it also depends on how well I've added my pen. And see, I have to go a little bit harder than I have been. I'm just going to add a little bit more here because there's a spot there that was kind of off my page. This foil isn't inexpensive, so I try to use up corners and everything instead of just using whole new sheets every time I'm starting a new project. And there you go. So again, part of this is I think if I was using a lot more glue, it would have gone on a little bit more evenly. But as you can see, like I'm actually getting really good transfer. And that's just with rubbing it. And let's look at just using some deco pen straight on a piece of white paper. And again, you want to make sure you get that sandwich in place. on your laminator and put it on through. And you want to let that cool a little bit. Pull off the and there you go. So again that was just me just messing around with um, just adding some doodles and just adding some marks. So one thing I've realized is that when you're adding that pen, any area that isn't having perfect saturation, like in here and here, where I was making very fast strokes, it's not gonna go all the way through. You can actually see where there's a little bit of foil on this side and this side and a little bit of white in between. And that's just from how much of the pen you lay down. So if you really want a super strong pen image, you may want to go over it a couple times just to get that really strong image in place. I think always the laminator, the heat and that pressure together is going to make a better effect. But at the same time, when you're trying to work in places where maybe it's a little bit harder to get those images into, like your journal, this is where that pen really does shine a little bit. And being able to actually rub it and add it in a different way it may be a little less perfect, but it really kind of gets you that result that you want. Some some different texture and shine on our journal page that you would not usually be able to put this type of foil onto. So now I've brought back up uh, the ones that I had added the gel to earlier. So this one I think is most of the way dry. This one still has a few spots. Anywhere you can see the white, that is where it hasn't fully dried. But I'll be honest, I'm impatient. And usually when I do this type of work, I will do it before I go to bed one night and then I will 
leave it till the next morning, but for the sake of this demo, I didn't want to wait too, too long with it before moving on and seeing what we can do with this. This one I'm going to actually put through the laminator just to show you how well that works. And then we're also going to do this one with just an iron and see how it works. Cause this one, this page actually already has some acrylic paint. It has some mediums. It has some other things on top. So we'll see how it works by adding the deco foil on top. So this one I'm adding the deco foil on top. This is one thing you need to remember anytime you're using deco foil is whatever you want on top is what you have facing you. I'm actually just going to smooth this out over top so I'm hoping that will help it adhere a little bit better and get a little bit more of a consistent image through the laminator. As you can see you can already see it kind of coming through. So this is where you could actually just use a uh, regular like Vegabond or sort of some sort of die cutting machine to do this. But I always find that generally the laminator works a little bit better. So I'm going to use that because that's what I have on hand. I think that will pull up quite nicely. That's a nice thing about actually using the, the medium, the transfer gel, is that you can actually put it in place very well. Notice I'm getting way less wrinkles than I did when I was using just the laser prints. And check that out. That looks really amazing. Uh, and again, it has a lot more dimension than these guys. So these guys are really nice. They're very flat, but this has way more dimension and has a really interesting look to it. So the only spot that didn't work was right here and that's where I put my finger in the gel. So that has nothing to do with the foil. That has to do with my user error. So you can see you can get a really great finish with it. So I just want to show you what it looked like when you put it through a laminator. Now I'm going to try it in my art journal and I'm going to try using an iron and I'm also going to use a section of just no heat because this Gel is supposedly supposed to work with no heat. Never tried it, but we'll give that a try next. Okay, and so this is not fully dry. And we'll see if this works with it not being fully dry. I'm just being really impatient today, so sometimes I, again, I try to usually do this stuff the night before because I am a little impatient about it. So with this section, what I'm going to do is just lay it on top and start rubbing like I had before when I was putting the other the other medium on the laminator sheet. I'm going to turn my book around so I can work on this a bit better without getting that sticky bit more sticky. So I think the key with this is, again, the idea with this is that you put pressure on it and that's what's going to help the foil move. So in this case, I'm going to, I went over with my fingers. Now I'm going to go over with my bone folder, see if I can get some of those spots to stick a bit better. I think you're always going to have better luck with heat than no heat. Let's give this a try and see what happens. So the areas that weren't fully dry, you can see they did not actually pick up all of the gel because the gel I think needs to be fully hardened. You can actually see where the gel came up with the foil. So that's the lessons learned for me. You gotta let it fully dry and don't be impatient about it before you move on. And I get the sense that really this, they say an hour, but what does this thing say? Yeah, one hour until clear. And I find that one hour is not generally enough.
So you can still get a really good result even with the gel not being completely dry. So if I would actually take a heat gun and try to dry this, I just ended up bubbling the glue. So we'll see how this turns out because uh, I realized there's a couple things I would have changed next time when I'm doing this in an art journal. I wouldn't have done any of this close to the edge because I ended up just having it kind of glob and then when I tried to clean it up, it kind of made a mark. So note to self, move things in a little bit, don't have it right to the edge. The other thing too is I need to get a little bit more consistent in how I add the glue here just because I ended up having some really thick areas and some thin areas, but part of that was because there was texture below. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break on that. Uh, but again, the idea is to maybe just let it fully dry overnight before trying to do this, but I've dried it as much as I'm willing to wait for it today. So I'm just gonna add this on top. And do the same thing. Try to get it nice and smooth on the surface so it doesn't buckle too much when I'm adding the iron on top. So I wanted to show you both the iron and the rubbing. So depending on how you like to move this off of a flat page or something that can go through a laminator, this might give you some ideas about how you can use this in your project. So one thing I'd like to say, I have a silicone sheet underneath and I'm gonna be adding the parchment paper on top. And we'll see how this transfers. Okay, that's steaming a little bit. That was probably too long. That was like 45 seconds to a minute. So I'm gonna let this cool. This has gotten quite hot. And actually, yes, part of the problem, and this is probably why I should use a longer silicone mat. This area here had a granular gel, and I think I may have maybe slightly set it on fire a little bit or get it steaming. Whatever the case is, not a good result. So uh, I think if you're gonna do this in a journal, make sure you have a full size silicone sheet underneath it to protect your project or use some parchment paper, something to try to keep the heat off and maybe add a few layers in there, especially if you have any sort of, uh, sort of medium. This side I've only had like watercolor and acrylic paint. So it seems like it hasn't been bothered at all from the heat. So something to think about when you're working your journal. This is still quite hot, so we're gonna let it sit for another minute or two. Okay, that seems to have cooled down a little bit, so we're gonna try to pull this off and see see what we get. So because it was such a fine design, and I think the Art Deco glue expanded a little bit as I did this. And yeah, you can see the spots where it's pulling. This isn't great. See if I can, aha, there we go. I can use my finger and that will prevent it from pulling so badly. So I think if I'm gonna be using the gel, I need to be careful how many times I go over it, especially on really detailed surfaces. I don't know if the gel is the best for these super detailed surfaces. But again, I also didn't let this fully dry either. So I think this is something that's gonna require a little bit more experimentation on my part. Figure out what I like and what I don't like with this. So the area that dried a little bit more came off a lot easier. So again, fully let this thing dry. <laughs> that is my learning for today. And I hope you can learn from me so you don't have to find this out the hard way. Yeah, because the areas on top here that were really fully dry and on a lot thinner, you can actually see those really fine marks. But a lot of this area ended up being quite a bit thicker. I don't really mind the look of it though because I'm just going to incorporate this into my journal page. So it's not going to be... A really a big issue at the end of the day. So there you go. That's a whole whack of different ways that you can either use an iron, a laminator, or just rubbing to use both your transfer gel, your pen, as well as laser images with deco foil. 
again, this was meant to be a really loose video. This was me experimenting with things and just showing you a bit of my process. So often we can get so wrapped up in the idea of having it figured out the first time around or using it on a project we care about and not getting great results. So usually when I get any sort of product, I run through these types of exercises. I try it on a flat surface. I try it in a journal. I try it in a few different places just to figure out what works and what doesn't. And by doing that, that kind of gives me a really good understanding so I can use these products confidently. Yeah, it means I go through a few of the foil sheets and they're not super inexpensive, but at the same time, if you're going to use a product, I think it's really important that you learn how to use it well because then you'll use it a lot better in your projects. You'll be so much more happy with the results. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you could like it, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I would also love to hear what you use Decafoil for in your projects and any questions that you might have. I would be really interested just to start a conversation about this because for me this is a newer product so I would love to get your input on how you use it. Also, you can find the supply list below. You can also find it on my website, hopalongstudio.com. On my website, I include photo and written instructions for each of my projects. So if you want to reference back to it, you can find that information there. So I hope you take some time for some creative self-care this week and I will see you next time. Bye for now.